Lots of times, I feel like we just keep it PG-13 on this channel, right? And it's bite the bullet. And it's bite the bullet. But I'm going to be very honest as to, like, what I want and what I would want them to feel for me. But I just really feel like that sexual tension, like, sometimes when we just look at each other or just having to just be sitting on, on the couch or just even when you go through your day and it's just, like, I can't get wait to, like, Yo. go home and, like... But even at events, and all you just catch oh. eye contact. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Insert devil <laughs> emoji here. I'm ready. Give it to me. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, 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 uh. Till you set up yourself. Yes, please, because you know my blanket. Yeah. For true. Did they just see your legs? I don't know. Did you? Yeah, the first time y'all see your legs on the couch. It's getting a little sexy whole in here. The whole drumstick. But, oi, oi. so what's going on? So what, so what, so what? It's me, Katie Mione. And it's your girl, Jojo Renee. And you are tuned in to Bite the Bullet episode numero 16 16 but we got a different language for y'all today Jenny, 16 that's insane oh for a second i thought i got an episode number wrong i was like no, oh but shit I mean, like uh you know what I mean. <sighs> it's insane well guys you know what's more insane 16 in portuguese so let's <laughs> hear it wait that is true what wait ah. jesus says Jesus says. That's why I had this. Benvenido a Jesus says. Jesus says. Jesus says. Hey, I love Portuguese. I ain't even gonna lie. Jesus says. Jesus says. I know a little bit of Portuguese, guys. Estoy content. That means I'm happy. I was gonna say that sound like you content. Uh huh. And then some of it is almost like um, papimento, cause they mm, say bom dia. That means good bon, morning. Like bon. Bon dia. Bon dia. Boa tarde. <coughs> Boa tarde. But like, you know, Portuguese, Spanish, Dutch, mm. still no one language in the baby me. They talk your shit. So but that's what they did here. at the time, you know, the slaves. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got Portuguese in my um, family. Yeah. Yeah, like, you I think not. heavy a little bit. What do you mean? You think so? Mm, oh, not heavy, percentage. but close. No, it's close. So... I need to ask my mother to check the tree and stuff. Mm-hmm. I think is the grandmother of my grandmother or the grandfather of my grandmother oh, was yes, Portuguese. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. But um, uh, guys, welcome back. Yes, she says. Don't forget to like, <laughs> comment, and subscribe, mm-hmm. please, and put on the notification Follow bell. Follow and star on Spotify or you whatever know, platform you know, you're listening you know. to. And do what yeah, you gotta guys, do. Today we have, I'm really, really excited about this episode because I feel like we haven't talked about relationships like that in a minute. In a minute. Yeah. And I've been having some theories and I've been listening to stuff and I just have a lot of thoughts that I would love to share and converse. <clears throat> so, but also in the spirit of like, we're gonna start with a negative and maybe shift the positive. Because, like, maybe mix it up, sandwich it. So the people them can breathe. But it's going to be all over it, in between. Yeah. yeah up yeah. and true. And down the place. Oh! I don't know if y'all know this. Y'all probably uh, didn't because it's not in the frame. Um, I'm not drinking water today, guys. <laughs> I'm drinking Louis juice. Louis juice. Louis, it just, wait. We have a first impression because we both got this. And this I is a new flavor. Yeah, I didn't have this flavor either. So, oh, so we're going to give y'all a, uh, what do you call it? But before you know what, if you don't know what Louis juice is, Mando... The man, man them. like Mando, man like Mando. He makes his own juices. Yes. So, you know. They're scrum de Leonches. You could get them at what's the name of the um barber shop? Oh. Was it fresh cuts? Yeah. Oh. He does usually have them at fresh cuts. I think it's fresh. We gon' we gonna plug him in there properly. <clears throat> but if Jody had asked me what is Louis Juice, and I was like, if you don't know Mando last name is Louis Juice Day. It's so Louis chic. Juice. Mendel, sorry, we here giving out your government name, but it's on Facebook, yeah, so it's fine. Um, well, you, I don't know what favorite I have. 
you know. Strawberry. Oh. And I have like a passion fruit. There was more ingredients involved, but it was like a quick exchange. Oh, whoop, whoop. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Eye contact. Ah. It's giving Guys, fresh. I feel healthy already. Like, it's really good. I think this is a passion fruit lemonade. This is definitely... Sh- it's giving watermelon and strawberry. I want to put some chia seeds in here. Ooh. I have. Fuck. <laughs> I'm going to save half of the bottle. Uh, but yes, chia guys. Seeds. So if y'all want your fresh juices. Oh, this is like really like fresh, fresh juice, yeah, guys. It is. We're going we gonna to plug it in. Put up, man them like mando. Mm-hmm. And get your fresh I'm sorry, Gosh. we are smacking and... Nom, nom, nom. It's in, in my hands. Oh, ASMR. my sister would turn this off right now. But ASMR. let's let's get into it. Let's let's start with our you know usual question. How are you doing? Oh yeah. How's it going? <clears throat> my voice is coming back. It's been on and off. Last week I actually had no voice at all. But I was like, thank God it's this week and not the week after, because when we record. I told her I blame them kids. Yeah. <laughs> I think so too though, because I literally I'm a doctor before. Yeah. After work, I went straight to the doctor, then I come home before yeah. here. And then he was just like, um, it's going to be normal for you to get a cold combined with if you're working with kids and germs and da da da. But I was like, it wasn't this bad when I just started working there, but then I was COVID. Facts. But then like, even a year before, but I was like, I really need to maybe just work on my immune system or something. But then like then I was like, Maybe you need me, some more Louis juice. <laughs> <laughs> right but she was like that's not how immune system work like my body gonna get accustomed to the yeah. germs and then be able to fight them all better or whatever but yeah it is adapt or yeah. evolve so da really and truly but i don't know i really i'm in a really good place i love that for you <laughs> and you i'm good girl i'm good um not much updates. You know, 5 a.m. gym sessions in yeah. full effect. I went this morning. You do the 5 a.m. today? Yeah. Oh. So, a bitch is sore. Like, I'm just sore Damn. because I also did a aerial hoop class. Mm. It was so cool. Aerial oh, hoop. It was like, so aerial hoop. <clears throat> I didn't know. So, I know y'all probably don't know. It's basically, you got hoops in the air. Aerial hoop. And uh, you do like acrobat type oh, stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And girl is a I have a bruise right here. I have my battle scars and I got bruises on my leg. But you gonna keep a, going. A best ball leg. I, like that. I already booked my next session for next week. And I'm just into just doing a bunch of things I've never done before. I feel you. Like I went to this yoga class. <laughs> I've been telling people this. I was like, if are you walking to that class mid class, you would think I was in a cult. Because <laughs> it was it's called yoga embodiment. The embodiment was really the focus of that class. Because in my head, I thought I was going to do like stretches, you know, this and that and that and this. But I get into the class, the instructor's like, um, yeah, so this class is all about being one with your body. I'm like, oh, nice. And we basically had to move our body from like head to toe, well, toe to head. Mm-hmm. I ain't going to lie. Everybody's eyes was closed, but I was peeking. I was like, I want to see how everybody looked. Yo, everybody had looked like they was on crack. Like, guys, it was great. I think it was very embodying, but it had looked so awkward. But how on crack? Like, because, like... You going, like, (laughs) this. For the ones who don't see, it's just a lot of movement. Because you got to move your arms. and, And there's no guidance to the movement. So you just moving to what you think you should be moving or what your body feels to move. Which is really cool. It felt good. It was very out of my comfort zone because I was like, I look like an idiot, but I really didn't. But I kind of did. But at some point, it was like a tribal kind of song mm-hmm. and we had to shake. And <laughs> the instructor was like, and you have to take deep breaths and then sigh. So I was like, <sighs> oh my days. I won't go. They had seven girls and one man. When we had to sigh, in my head, I was like, I know why he here. That shit <laughs> sounded like a full-on orgy. I was like, where I am I? Imagine. It was, you know what it is to just say, ah, all around you, and you just, you shake it? <laughs> oh my gosh, I was like, this is cool. Like, it was really cool. So that's that's how I've been. I've been different. No, I get you. But I would yeah. want to go, though. I really want to start doing different things. Next week, I'm going to do a trial for flag football. 
Because I've been <laughs> wanting to. You maybe you were killing. But like, yeah. But from MPC, we used to do fly for buffer gym, and that was my shit. That was Why my favorite that? days in gym. And I wanted to try it out in St. Martin, but they, they keep not having practice in the summer. Oh. Mm-hmm. Or for carnival. Because carnival, everybody was mash, keep being mash. Mm. And then for summer, I guess it was just not tinging. And then last week, one of my friends, I see he was poor. He was at a ting. And I was like, what's this? And he was like, if you wanted to try out. Like, you want to try out, try out. Yeah. Nah, that's cool. So I really am to just trying different things now. And I wanted to go back to Hughes class, but the one I want to go to is in Amsterdam. And I don't know if I can always make it to Amsterdam. Well, when you go again, let me know. I want to go. I never dance in Hughes. Mm-hmm. Okay, and cool. I find those classes so sexy. So it's they like, are. Mm. but this one is for Afro Hughes. You know, I'm the. I know. <laughs> you know. So, and then we're going to go to embodiment. The week okay, after. I want to do that. I wanted to do yoga too. But yeah. Yes, guys. So um, I hope y'all are doing good. Yeah. And I out of funny book, books, but I don't know if I can get to all of them. I um, where I out of funny books. Okay, give me one that you're most excited to read. Um, The one I'm most excited to read is the one that one from one of Oprah book clubs, because I never read one of the books, because we know one of her books is like it. Her book club yeah, is like Yeah, the big, big, know. big, big, big one. I got that on my list, but yeah. I'm out of that one yet. But okay. this one is called Black Cake. Oh, so I don't know. I just got into it. I can't wait. This Ooh. podcast is gonna become like a book club session. It is. Oh, and another one is the psychology of money. Oh, I'm reading that. You reading that? Yes, you I lie. read it too. So now I'm trying to get out of my comfort zone by reading two books because I always thought, oh, I should read one, so I focus. I read in the Law of Power. I just googled that, and it was like, if you do that, read one in the morning and one in the night. Bitch. <laughs> Cause I was like, I don't know if I gonna keep getting. Yo, you have to keep... like insert devil emoji there. Yeah, <laughs> but yo, yeah, yes, okay. But the law of power scares me because it goes against my integrity. Heavy. That book is wild. Mm-hmm. It is good to be aware of the laws they teach you so that it's not used on you. However, mm-hmm. if you are able to grasp the laws so well, you can also use them the on power, people, which yeah. is. A bit it's scary. It's, it's, yeah, I feel like that book in the wrong hands is terrible. I never read it, but back in Clubhouse days, they literally had rooms where they would discuss books. Oh, and that day I, I tuned into the boom that boom. I tuned into the room where they was discussing that and they went through each law. And I was just listening to it the like a podcast. Are wild. Yeah. Can I go over a law real quick? So yeah, they have yeah, a law, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have a law basically saying let others do the work and take credit. I was like, whoa, okay. And mm-hmm. then how the book is amazingly written. Mm-hmm. It has stories based on like BC times, Napoleon, all of that. And it's so interesting. So basically for this law, they basically use the example of a turtle. The turtle went up to an elephant and the turtle was like, yeah, I'm as strong as you. Like I could take you on. The elephant laughed and he said, cool, let's see. So the turtle said, okay, cool. Let's mm-hmm. do it. Hold on to this rope. The turtle goes over the hill. He sees a hippo. He was like, I bet I'm stronger than you. Same thing. Hippo laugh. Checking like, cool, let me do this. So the turtle gives the hippo the rope. He says, when I go over the hill and I say, mm-hmm. when I say, hey, pull. And then the turtle went over the hill to the elephant and said, when I say, hey, pull. He went over the hill where none of them could see him. And mm-hmm. he said, hey, they both start pulling. And then they both realized, wow, this turtle is as strong as us, not realizing that <laughs> one side is an elephant and one side is a hippo, but a turtle took the credit for both. So, oh, yes. yes, guys. But I could see how people apply that shit into their lives oh, all the time. Ten percent. <clears throat> Y'all be doing glasses. that straight. It's a bit trifling, but yeah, yeah we keep it moving. So. Nah, nah, see? But if that also, that also, because what I do now is I make an entire list on my Amazon cart of books I can just get eventually. And then every month I'm going to take some out you really joined the book club. Yeah. You are really but I joined. always I always was into books, but yeah. I used to use books to procrastinate from work. Productive procrastination. And now as you know, I have more time, which is exactly. what, one of these days I'm really get into why I have more time now. But like <laughs> um I so know. I was like I could actually read now and not feel guilty for reading. If you get what I mean. Yeah, I get it. So that is like, okay, now I could take it up again and like really do devo- like party start yes okay. but yeah um, um oh no i was gonna say what whenever we went all over the place we that did. like in the spirit of like we're gonna start with the negativity that like so many couples breaking up now 
And I talk about celebrities. I don't know about IU business. But like <laughs> we don't know about IU. Like we talk yeah. about the celebrities. And a lot it's like it becoming this thing of like what is happening, guys? And then people just out there like I losing hope if these couples break up. Because I remember it first start with like um of course, other people. But I know, like, Tia, Mari, and Corey Hardick had breakup. Megan Good and her pastor husband had breakup. Our oh, divorce. We're talking about divorces yeah. at this point. Um, Even Beyonce, mother, and her stepfather had a, had gotten a divorce. And then, um, in the spirit of the whole, when that Kiki Palmer thing happened, everybody thought it was like, such a good couple. But they ain't back together? No. Oh, it was just he take her off for her break. I mean, guys, at the end of the day, that's the child of his mother, the mother of his child, the child of his mother, the mother of <laughs> his Ew, child. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then recently it was like Jeezy and Jeannie Mai and Tiana Taylor and Iman Shamsun. No, you, I know you haven't been on social media, but Tiana Taylor and Iman Shamsun are separated. Jody and when that one come out, everybody was just like. Nah, because they was they was the top of the goals. Bro, I had loved them just as a black family, just as like how they used to be had, like friends. They literally best exactly. friends. But she come out and put some post like at the end of the day, that's her friend, like that's her that's family at this point. And it's just like I just feel like Oof. I don't want to lose hope. But I ain't losing hope. No, I know you out there. <laughs> <laughs> But like at the end of the day, I think I I realizing like it's forever or like for real. And then I hear this theory of like some people feel like it's not. Some people really feel like you experience people for a certain time and then they go on into their lives and you just experience them at that time and then you go on to maybe meet somebody else and then you go on to meet some people really be out here forever. Right? But like I feel like nowadays forever seems more and more I don't like using word, but unrealistic in our <laughs> society. Because yeah. longevity is is too long for us. They even shorten songs. They used to be five minutes. Now it's like two. Because <laughs> we just yeah. can't breathe. Like our constitution, that fuck that we can't stay in a relationship forever. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I'm still digesting this. Because, the I, yeah, one? I didn't know that. Yeah. But I know that was, that was really, that really come out since you've been off the socials. But they so. also say, like, in the States, well, 50% of marriages end in divorce. It's a big number. In a sense, so like fifty percent of celebrities probably going to divorce, and we see in them constantly. Like I yeah, don't know, true. but I also do feel just in general nowadays people just not staying together. And hmm. my main thing is the accessibility of everybody else. Mm. Where it's like before you put in more work because you know that this is your person, and you don't have five thousand other people to compare them to on a daily basis. Mm. Where it's like, I notice sometimes where people, well, where relationships, one or the other would have an issue, say, or say you find a man and he checks off eight things on your list. Mm -hmm. But now you're irritated because he's missing them two things. Yeah. And then uh, you have a little pickle and now you go find somebody with the two things. I feel like what has happened a lot is people go and find somebody who have the two things that's missing. And then they mess up the eight things. Mm -hmm. And now while they're with the two things, they realize there's a whole eight things missing. Mm -hmm. And it's like you, everybody's so into looking for what they don't have mm -hmm. rather than kind of appreciating, but also finding middle ground with what they do have. I feel like a lot of people, especially nowadays, we're not compromising as much as we used to compromise. And I'm not saying we have to be out here compromising, but at the end of the day, if you want a long and healthy relationship, you kind of got to compromise. Yeah. If your love language is this and their love language is that and it doesn't really mesh, y'all find a way to mesh or you dip. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like my head with this conversation, I feel like there's so many levels to the conversation it because is. it's like you had the time where it's like at the end of the day, though, at the same time, people used to just stay together for the sake of it, even though they was very unhappy and circumstances used to push them to do things. Yeah. And then it's like, but at the same time now, because we have so much access to people, people realizing like, I don't have to stay here. And then they dip in. So there's that side of the coin. And then there's also like the other layer of like, I don't know, like, but are we choosing the right people though? And then that's why it's like, this, I don't know what, what it is, it's all of it. And I feel like it's a mumbo jumbo of all of it as to why we're here. Because I feel like at the end of the day, I feel like forever does exist. But I feel like if you 
one, doing what you're talking about. But then, I don't know. I feel like I'll, there's a layer of it of like, what, what are we basing it on to know who, if somebody really for us and if they could last forever? But I feel like that's where the <clears throat> issue is now because we're basing it on everybody else's experience in the sense of now we getting the red flags of Linda who just posts a TikTok video mm. or we getting the, oh my gosh, I experienced this of John who just posted that video and now it's starting to shape our perspective on what we should experience, which is why I find a lot of people... For one, I feel like people dating for the ego, which is why things don't last as long. Especially if you look at celebrities to a level. Explain you that, dating yeah. to continue to add fluff to an already inflated ego. And I'm not saying they're solely doing that, but you have to keep up appearances or whatever. Mm-hmm. So there's that level of like purity or genuinity that is kind of diminished. Mm-hmm. Because now you have a different perspective on the interactions you have with your significant other. And I feel like the same, not the same, but similarly, because celebrities are on a much bigger scale. Yeah. But I feel like similarly with social media, you keeping up appearances with your significant other, which makes it less significant because you not thinking, let's do this because we want to do it. You thinking, let's do this because they look good. Or in interactions, you would think, Oh, I saw this video yesterday about this. We even mentioned it, how we don't really have our own thoughts. Yeah. When it comes to like opinions and, you know, people kind of putting in the comments and whatnot. I I feel like I'm starting to see the same in my life. Even for me, where it's like, I be hearing so much things. Oh, I'm back on TikTok, guys. It's been two weeks, three (laughs) weeks. Yeah, Yeah, I downloaded it like three days ago. I said, "Mm, I'm coming back. But Instagram's still off. Um, But yeah, like... For me, I be seeing so much videos on my TikTok mm-hmm. about be the one that got away or like um, <laughs> like things, you know, kind of to do in a relationship to get a specific outcome. Mm-hmm. And I feel like there's no general rule. And that's where we all kind of lose in touch with each other because we kind of following. We used to follow beauty standards. Mm-hmm. Now we follow in social standards. TikTok. Um, we following TikTok standards. Yeah, TikTok standards. TikTok standards. Yeah. Like, and, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know. There's that. I also think, like, I don't know if people actually know what it means to love a person and be in a relationship. I don't know what else to look out for. I feel like that's also missing. I also read in the, I had this book for a time, for time, but, like, <clears throat> I finally finished it. The Emotional Intelligence book. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you and, have that. and it's like it speaks i feel like there's so much i need to do with unlearning and like relearning Same. or just learning in the sense of like you can't really essentially the book trying to say when it comes to emotional intelligence like you can't understand and i've seen i've said i've seen this online but it really went into like the biology of things and just the common situations and how you could apply that in so many different levels and areas in your life we are like <clears throat> if you don't understand yourself emotionally you're going to never understand situations, relationships when it comes to family, work, friends, mm. all of it. <coughs> Would you say? It's okay. Um, Disclaimer. We said it in the beginning. It is a little <coughs> under the weather. Mm-hmm. But like, would you say or what would you say with regards to what you value more? Do you value loyalty or love? Loyalty in the sense of in a relationship? Yeah. <laughs> or or like any any ship you have in your heart. I'm so sorry, guys. So like friendship, relationship, companionship, sinking ship. <coughs> I, f- I don't know. I finally have to choose. I feel like loyalty stems from love. But I mean, if I have to choose, like, how do you choose that? I choose loyalty. <coughs> I used to choose love until I realized you can't rely. On- I feel. Let me put it this way. Loyalty is discipline. Love is motivation. Which is why I choose loyalty because... But what do you mean love is motivation? So loyalty (laughs) being... This is kind of comparing them in a different sense. Loyalty in my eyes is the discipline when you're doing something. Motivation. Love is motivation to do the thing. You won't always have motivation. But discipline is what keeps (coughs) you like progressing or keeps you just there and continuing to cultivate whatever you choose 
to stick to. Mm. And yeah. that's why I feel like before I used to think love, and I still am, who will always say it, I'm a hopeless romantic. As bad as I see the dating scene, as dark as I may get, I will always believe that the love I deserve is out there. But I know that I, and maybe the person who I'm with, <coughs> won't always be in a place to openly love me because I know for myself, sometimes I'm not in a place where I love myself. But I think that goes even deeper to something I hear on the Receipts podcast of like, I think people think like, but you say <clears throat> that romantic love is all you need in a relationship. Because like they had a dilemma where um, I think, I think the, the, the lady pregnant yeah, and the husband literally just like, I don't love you no more. So I think we should split up. And then, <coughs> what the hell? Okay. I'm not going to lie, I think it's one of the seeds from the... <coughs> it's just... Louis juice. <coughs> stuck in my throat. But, um, yeah, and then they was like, to a level, it's like, you choose to marry this person. Mm-hmm. You get the hop, well, you decide to have a child. Mm-hmm. And now you come in with, I don't love you no more. Yeah. Whereas, like, to a level, it comes to, like, what you're saying with, like, the loyalty and choosing... To realize that, like, sometimes it's not just about love. Yeah, I feel like, I don't know. I'm a very mindset-driven person. So what's in your head is, like, what you continue to project. And you could plant that seed of, like, oh, I'm falling out of touch with this person. But by you deciding to take action (coughs) to find a way to fall back in touch, you yanking that seed right back out of the soil in a sense of, like, I don't know. I feel like... In, in moments, things get hard mm-hmm. and it's easy to be like, oh, we drifting apart. Well, I started to feel like, I catching a cup. Co- nah, man, we good, Sorry. we good, we good, we good. No, no, we good. But yeah, you could feel like you drifting apart and it's easy, especially now, to put your attention somewhere else or feel like, I need this because there's so, like what everybody think, there's so many fish in the sea. But I genuinely don't... <laughs> I don't know. For me, I feel like if you keep thinking like that, you're going to keep fishing because you're going to keep <laughs> jumping from fish to fish. <laughs> I'm so sorry. You want to you pause? <laughs> yes, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back. How are we feeling? How are you feeling? I had a cup of tea, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pip, pip, I just needed to like, get the, you know. Yeah. But yeah, no. Um, <clears throat> well, I really wanted to really get into guys when I was there like having a choke attack. Is that like, um, and like that? Why I'm trying to say with like, do, do people really know what they need to choose in a partner to realize that it's not just about the love and the whole emotional intelligence that goes behind that of realizing that there's so many other different things that you need to look for in a partner before you just think, okay, like I have feelings for this person, this is enough. If you get what I mean, because well, like, like what things would you, like? For example, what things would you say? That's more important than that. Because it goes back to what you asked me, like, loyalty or love. You Would you just blindly have loyalty for somebody that, like, don't genuinely, like, care about your feelings and what you have going yeah. on? Pushing you to be ambitious and I making know. sure you're not always comfortable. Or, for example, just your family values. Their values, their moral compass in life. I feel like there's so many different things. But it depends where you are in life, to be honest, too. Because, like, right now in my life, like, I know exactly what I want and where I go in. Whereas, like, 85, six, seven years ago, I don't think it was that important for me to be with somebody that was, like, in my corner so much of pushing me to, I guess, on that level. But just, like, appreciating me for who I am and, like, those kind of different things. But I know, like, for example, the dilemma I was talking about with this lady... I don't know what's going on in their life, for example. But mm-hmm. if you choose, if you if you have a wife, and at, are you at the stage now where you have an unprotected sex that she could get pregnant and she can become the mother of your kids? Yeah. And you just up and be like, yeah, I'm not in love with you anymore. It's like you didn't you put that much thought into the fact of like... This is a possibility. That that is actually a possibility. Yeah. And like, maybe I don't want this person to be the mother of my kids eventually because I don't want to be in contact with this person. Maybe they're a shit person. I don't yeah. know. They have so many things that people can have run into. Maybe they're a narcissist. Maybe they're just selfish. You don't know. Like, there's yeah. so many different things. And I just what I mean is like, I think one, people, if you don't meet yourself there, 
I guess, intellectually as an emotional individual, you're not going to see that in other people. And that's why it's just like, I don't know if people know what they're looking for because one, it could be that you don't even know what it is you have going on in yourself. Yeah. So why they're not choosing the right people and they're not, st- and then you reach a different le- level in your life 10 years gone and then it's like, this is not sustaining me anymore. No, exactly. Because at that present time in your life, like you didn't think on the full picture of if this person going to like meet those things on all levels. Yeah. But I don't know. Those, that's the things I would need now it could be like in five six years like there's other even things that's more important but i feel like if you're having conversations with us on mindset to me like having like a certain mindset too because if you have a person that just don't think further or just look at the way like stubborn and just look yeah. at life how they look Black at life white. just know that five years from maybe or you might think the same now you might think the same now yeah. but five six seven years from now they're gonna still have the same stubbornness that maybe you grew out of in a certain level or area in your life that you're just going to never change about. And it's like, what do you do with that then? And that's why it's like, yeah. that's why it's like, as much as we say that, like, I can know this girl. <laughs> no, I'm not coughing. Like, I'm able to laugh. Um, my friend, have this friend who, like, literally have a Google form that she just give to men before she go on a date with them. But wow. on the same level, it's like, but is she wrong, though? Because there are so many things you have to really meet as in. I wouldn't do it, though. Yeah, I was just about to say she ain't very, wrong, but I wouldn't organically do it. <laughs> find that shit out. But like, there's so many different things that like a person have to meet really to for you to know if this person. And that's why I feel like one, I don't think people really just look at the full picture before they get with people and think that this could last forever because it's not just going to be that the love is there and this person like to be around me right now. Like, there's so many other things you have to think about. Yeah. But, and even, like, I ain't even mention, like, how you are in money and, like, stuff you yeah, want to, I like, there's so many different stuff. things. But I think as you, like, when you meet a person, you kind of establish, well, before you meet a person, we've been saying this, like, you set your boundaries in a sense of what is non-negotiable. Like, for example, for you, what would be non-negotiables? We keep asking this question, but, like, it's really, like, black. But, um, um <laughs> <clears throat> no, non-negotiable right now is that you have ambition. Yeah. Because, like, if you're telling me, and because I, I say this with a sense of, like, you could be doing any kind of job, but if you really just check in, like, I'm good with this, even though it's very yeah minimum. And I guess some people don't mind. People are just like that. But me personally, like, I would want to know that, like, in 10 years, that, like, we're working for ourselves or something. Fact. And it's, like, we don't want to be stuck in the same notion of, like, yeah. I don't know where we are Rat now. Race. Exactly. And that's why that is a big non-negotiable for me right now. Hmm. For me, for that, that you know me. Mm-hmm. Big. I think for me also kindness now, especially because... Oh, that's, a, that's a prerequisite. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what's wild? I feel like the fact that we have to actually define this is, is crazy Like what's me. kindness? No, just the fact <laughs> that we have to define these things that should just be like normal. Like if you look at... The fact that we eat so shit now that eating good is actually called a diet. Kind of comparing it to that, where it's like... Mm, it should be a lifestyle. Yeah, these are things I feel should be... A, like, this is me and being utopia or whatever, but it's facts, though. At the end of the day, I feel like it's wild that now we have to establish bare minimums and establish red flags and establish green flags. And I feel like it's starting to blur a lot, where it's like... Like I mentioned before about we dating based off of other people's perception. Mm-hmm. I feel like everybody has their own like level of red flags, level of green flags, whatever, whatever. But now we reach into a point where we not realizing what our own are. And when it comes to finding somebody, you have this. I'm not coming for you with your Google form. Go through, girl. We have like these Google forms and thing where it's like <laughs> organically like getting to know people and having that social connect to me now is Mm -hmm. so far out of reach Mm -hmm. where it's like we have to be defining shit. And for me, it's so unproductive in a sense because I don't feel like it applies to everybody. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the kindness, the ambition, I feel like that should be a foundation for everybody. Mm -hmm. If you in a relationship or whatever, where you with somebody who's unkind, you best believe when all you have like situations and whatnot, 
it could go left quick. Mm -hmm. So having that foundation already, but it's just that level of also really realizing what you want. Mm -hmm. For me, that's getting a bit harder. As much as I'm finding myself, it's crazy in a sense of like, I feel like I'm getting closer to myself, but farther away from people. That's that's what I mean, because you are a person that's so in tune with what Jodi like and who you are. It makes it harder than... For people that come through your way, for them to like meet the requirements because you realizing that this person is not where I'm at emotionally and they're not just they're just not meeting me. And I feel like that's where it's like you have that level of and it's and people like to look at that as like, yeah, I have high sounds or what. But it's like, no, you actually know what you want and what you're looking for. But it's just like Fox. we know the dating market right now is just so shit. So it's like whatever come your way you're just not going to take it or accept it and you're not going because you know yourself emotionally i feel like what i'm trying to say too is the point of like people that don't know themselves emotionally it's very easy for them to get in relationships because they're not thinking and looking at all these things that you would see as very much important yeah and then time goes by and it's like oh like i don't want to be here anymore yeah and whereas like we might see it as like yeah you're getting further away from Duh. But I mean, in the long run, when it does come your way, like, you know, that shit going to be like into the because you're out there. <laughs> exactly. But then, you know, nah, yeah. like, you know how real and how like, like you're going to know that this shit like going to last at least, you know, True. if you just look at it from that perspective. But back to like the forever mm. question, because yeah, for me. I do hope, pray, all of that for a forever with somebody. Yeah. I just feel like I've also realized that, like you mentioned, you could be with people in seasons Mm -hmm. and maybe your summer doesn't look the same as theirs. And Mm -hmm. unfortunately, you got to kind of move past that. Yeah. But what I'm hoping for is that shit gets so fucked up communicationally wise that we have to kind of really take a step back and build back those communication skills that we're starting to lose heavily but fucked up like in a sense of like the the world like, like how global warming has become global boiling <laughs> and people are actually paying attention yeah where it's like i feel like the level of if i had to put it in a in a general term i feel like we are so socially connected yet so socially disconnected. Yeah, we are. Because with a whole social media, we we could just say hello so quick. But now when it comes to just having a conversation, if nobody's saying anything, a phone is automatically pulled out. And it's that level of, I don't hope it gets to global boiling, mm-hmm. but I just really hope that it starts to reach a level where people realize how fucked up it is even if you look at dating apps, mm, mm-hmm. I if you want to be on your dating apps, go through, do your thing. Mm-hmm. But I think dating apps have been so detrimental to the dating community because, for one, people are starting to not get used to rejection. And I'm not saying rejection is great. We all know it's not. However, you keep falling. You get stronger when you stand back up. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, I think it's necessary. And the fact that For one, you don't know who swiped left on you. And for two, you could just swipe right and get your perfect match. There's no risk. And I feel like... What do you mean there's no risk? You're not going to walk up to a girl and risk getting rejected. Mm. Instead, you're getting swiped left and you don't even know it. Because, you know, I've been on them. There's a level of like you you match and then like you realize this person after you and then the person just like unmatch with you. There's yeah, that level of rejection. There is, but that's a much smaller <clears throat> risk than... In person. No, but then approaching somebody. Because mm-hmm. when you approach somebody based off of not even their first impression, which makes the match, mm-hmm. you have no idea. You have no foot in the door. No, I, I don't know. I, I get what you mean in the sense of like, dating apps are draining. I look at it as just like draining because it's like... You have like a hundred options in front of your face that you just do swipe in and be as realistically that would never happen in person. But I like like I've had conversations where people people really feel rejected on those things because it's like 
you match with people and you're having such a good time and then all of a sudden like three days later you see that they just unmatch with you and then that mm. could really do something with you mentally but in the sense of like and then there's also a lot of people like i ask them like, how are you meet and there's like there's like the most cutest couple to me is like oh we met on tinder like there's a lot of relationships now that's like i don't think you're yeah. like saying it's completely but you mean it it it, uh, it has affected how we date yeah though. it has and i and i i get what you mean i just don't know yet if like what are you talking about like uh, to the point where we even get so fucked up i wonder if like that going to ever happen because like technology can just continue going and you gonna have even like you see now you i don't know if you see it but like tinder literally offering jobs no girl i don't know who gonna ever pay for this 500 a month to reach like this like you're gonna pay 500 a month and i don't know like, i didn't read up about it but it's like you're gonna have like this extra feature where it's like you could see like i guess i guess this is a better feature that comes with tinder but it's like they're gonna just come in they're gonna just keep coming with these things and i just wonder if like people gonna ever really feel like okay let me get back to how we're supposed to be every or people gonna just keep involving or indulging into like where we heading they probably will because it's easier in that sense where it's like you i think back then you know you had to be dating or you would just leave the house and <laughs> yeah <laughs> like now it's just easier to just sit at home and swipe like i'm not coming for dating apps in my head is like look however you want to date date i just don't see like it having a positive effect on dating. and statistically it hasn't had a positive effect because <clears throat> we are at the lowest rate or the highest rate of singleness mm-hmm. ever. So is that level of an app has you so exposed, but yet we still ain't finding that, you know? I, I find it, I, I get what you mean. I know I did find it in apps has been like, ugh. But at the same time, it's like, I feel like that's a level of like where we are socially as people too. Mm-hmm. Because of like... I just feel like a contribute. Yeah, and I don't know if like... Because when you think of like the people who run the world and like all the people like... In, run capitalism and like how we like our constitution with apps and technology like i feel like they're gonna just keep going and we're gonna just keep not we but society as people can just keep falling for it over and over and over and like as you say singleness is at its worst it's like but at the same time people not going outside and as we talk about last episode especially in certain countries people just not even coming up to you like they really just rather slide in your dms or whatever or say they see you yesterday when you walk past on the road. If but, y'all want a different experience, go to London. Everybody in yeah. their mother comes up to but you. But apparently not. Because they see oh. on the receipts. I was like, oh. My it's experience was different. Accent. Or maybe because it was carny. And then it's like, that's when people really looking out for. But even after carny. Different. But it's that, it's that time of the year. You Facts. feel me. It's summer. But it was talking about how like people would just stare at you. And I was like, but that's what we were saying. And I was like, yeah. wow, is it? I guess the people live and like, experiencing it the same way, I guess. I don't know. And I think it's, what we're, it's starting to become like a worldwide thing of like in person because the level of like what you talk about, social media, there's like you you would quick a slide in a DM and approach somebody in their face. Yeah. And it's just like. I think I I I don't know I I would hope what you say happen happen but I just feel like it's mm-hmm. just going to just keep getting worse and we're gonna reach a level where it's like it's going to start affecting like the population because people are not getting children as much because they don't have people together or maybe that's gonna just keep going I don't know like it will start actually affecting society but it I don't is, know yeah. if like because now they say they have more non mothers than mothers. Non mothers and mothers. So for the whole of human whatever, uh, 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 uh-huh. they've had mothers outnumber non mothers, but now non mothers outnumber mothers. Mm-hmm. So that's also an indication of like mm. things is going a bit like left. I mean, a lot of people might say okay, but we probably just don't want, want kids, kids that, which yeah. I do get. I just feel like there's been a level of like disconnect to what we initially just been on this earth for in the sense of like community and just building community. Now it's building a business and I'm a very business driven person. So Mm. I do get that level of it, but I feel like we are now on an imbalanced scale of like Mm -hmm. the business and the money and the corporate and the economy and that scale of family, connection, community, 
purpose is also starting to just yeah but i think it's because of that i think it's because we we so in a rat race of like what we need to be and like we literally in times where we can't afford to live or get a house or apartment so it's like there's other things that is on our mind versus right now having a kid it's like they're forcing us to think otherwise Mm -hmm. and i feel like it's all affecting each other in a way because then it's like that's kind of weird that's why to me like ultimately the people who run shit is to blame for all of this but that's what I mean. It's like they're going to keep being there. So, yeah, I and, don't know. And I think at the end of the day, we also got to look at, I think what we doing in a sense, like, yeah, they do have, I've been mentioning, they just sprinkling crumbs mm-hmm. and we not seeing those crumbs mm-hmm. until that full piece of cake start to form. But then it's too late. And I think that's been happening. And I do get that they, like the people up top, you know, they have the power, whatever. But it's just a level of the more. And I do feel like people becoming more aware. Mm-hmm. So I don't feel like that needs, or maybe it's the bubble I'm in. Because mm-hmm. they say the algorithm algorithm does have you in a bubble thinking that the rest of the world is mm-hmm. like that. But yeah, I just feel like to a level, if if we really have that awareness and start to build that awareness, yes, it is a far fetch because if you look at the kids, oh my days, like the mm-hmm. Yeah, it's intense. Mm-hmm. But I still do feel like people who are, who are younger than me <clears throat> have more awareness sometimes in terms of how they speak and just their level of questioning stuff. I think that's a that's one good thing I could say about social media. No, the younger generation. Yeah, oh my gosh, exposed, I feel so old saying younger but generation. But that's also because they're exposed to so much more yeah. now. Because like we we as we talked about before, like we get exposed to things after the fact when the internet blew up. But now imagine that like a twelve year old literally know about like, for example, like the whole Johnny Depp case with Amber Heard. Like they know about whole sexual assault and shit at yeah. eleven, twelve. Is like. We didn't even process that shit later that a man could be sexually, like, um, I mean, could be it was abused taboo. at this age. Whereas they heard le- learning these kind of things now at diet. And I, like to a level, like, they get an exposed to so much, which making it harder for parents to know how to do all of this and balance that and how, it's like, what is the, the, the hunt? what is the, like, the line. how do you, like, protect your kid from knowing too much or knowing what it should know and it's it's yeah. just getting so much harder to the sense where it's like we in our re- like we really in our phase where it's like I really want to see where we're going to be like 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now because it's Single. like right, <laughs> there's so much Not happening me, now that I think we still figuring out and it's just but I feel all like affecting each other. We figuring out but I feel like the what's happening is 10 times faster than the figuring out. Yeah, it is. <laughs> like, if you really look at things now, there's so many things on the list to figure out. But we don't get to all of it. Exactly. That's why I feel like my main focus, especially even when we were starting the podcast, is the whole dynamic between men and women. Because I would be lying if I say I'm not fearful to the fact that they predict that in 20, what, 2030? 40% of women will oh, be yeah, single. Yeah. And, and it's, I find it terrifying. I'm going to just be very honest. Like, I don't yeah. like being, I, I would, I don't like the idea of like me spending the rest of my life alone. Like, but that shit sounds lonely and sad. It makes you sick. Like, the literal, yeah, they the said one. That in the book about emotional intelligence. Like, yeah. Like, you literally could get sick if you isolate yourself or not surrounded by love all the time. It's true. Like and the the what you call it, the main the leading cause of sickness is loneliness. Mm-hmm. And my thing is like you got friends, cool. I love y'all, but there's a level of your person being everything, which doesn't diminish no, what your friends I are. Take her off. But you have people out here dying of heartbreak and stuff like that. That's how deep that connection goes. Mm-hmm. And it's scary to think that that connection has been so watered down by the external stimulation that is so out of reach in the sense of even if you look at relationships where people fall out, some people just get bored. I think my relationship is going to be fun in its own way, but it could be boring at times because it's going to be healthy. I feel Mm. like now a lot of people look for chaos 
which is so freaking unfortunate mm-hmm. because I don't, I can't give y'all that. Like, I feel like when I speak to man them too, they want me to be crazy. I was crazy. I have grown. I have turned a leaf. Mm-hmm. And I feel like everybody's so used to, oh, I was listening to this thing the other day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> ADHD guys. <laughs> um, that basically said, we are so um, aware of negativity over positivity because we had to be in the days of like um, survival mm-hmm. because you you had to be aware of threats and predators mm-hmm. when you have when you're outside and there's bears and shit. Mm-hmm. So as humans, we've evolved to latch on to negativity mm-hmm. quicker because it's our survival um, mechanism or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I feel like nowadays with relationships too, people are stimulated by stress. They're stimulated by spontaneity, but a lot of negative spontaneity. Mm. Like you even hear it on TikTok where people say, oh, give them attention and then pull back because they wouldn't expect that. And then just abruptly, y'all don't listen to that shit, please. Just be you. But stuff like that has me like, yo, people really like gravitate to just toxicity unfortunately and it's become so widespread and so familiar yeah that now looking for a situation that's just calm and could be boring because that is possible it's just so unrealistic i think it's realistic but you feel like a relationship could get boring i don't feel like it could get boring i feel like it's gonna be times where it's gonna be smooth sailing but people now mm. see that as boring because their baseline has risen. Remember, yeah. I mentioned the whole baseline shit where we don't even get bored anymore yeah. because there's so many distractions. And I feel like in relationships, you have it where it's smooth sailing and somebody just looks for something because it's like quote unquote boring. Yeah. So it's not that like it's boring that are you just staring even at a wall. Even if they really find it fun and interesting if you haven't. Exactly. Toxic. It needs yeah. to be telenovela. It needs to be reality TV. It's it's not. It's basically the notebook. Yeah. Which is still. That was yeah. a lot. Though. Yeah, that I was a lot. Never mind. But no, I mean, like, I want, because I don't want people confused that, like, understand that, like, what you're trying to say is that, like, if it's going well, that, you should find the fun in that. Yeah. And boring to me, because to me, when I think I'm boring, I mean, like, literally, like, I, don't, fun, I don't have fun with you. No, not like that. You know? Mm, let me see how I could phrase it. No, but I get what you mean. Yeah, because I ain't gonna lie. For me, I'm big on like my attention span is a bit, but I also love adventure. So my relationship, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. It never gonna get boring. We are gonna be doing aerial hoop and <laughs> painting and all of that stuff. Like there will always be something to do, but it's just that level of, yo, this is just, it's, it's smooth. It's good, yeah. It's smooth. There's no, there's no drama. There's no... Mm. and to me that's exciting but also add the fact that like i actually have fun doing the things that like we like to do together and like i genuinely want to do that with you oh like that gonna be good i don't know that gonna be great but we reach into we really reach into the point now where people like going in pods and like (laughs) you have my code going in pods i hope i don't know if people listen Watch the newest episodes of Love is Blind. Side note. No, yeah. If you do not... Oh, no. If you watch Love is Blind and you haven't watched it yet and you don't want spoilers, we're going to tell you where to skip to in the, the description so that you can skip there so that you don't get a spoiler. Because mm-hmm. I want to talk about these things freely. Yeah. If you don't watch Love is Blind and you like just interested, just keep listening. <laughs> uh-huh. But we ain't gonna, we going to be talking a lot about spoilers, so just skip to when we not yeah exactly <laughs> and, or maybe we just go watch it but yeah. yeah no so we reached the level now where people like you know what like i'm gonna just blindly try and fall in love with a person and what could go wrong see them propose to them without having seen them and then just being like uh-huh, yeah we're together forever Wee. like I just find it mind boggling. Last season, though, apparently, like all the couples still married. Yeah, <laughs> which is wild. I but, think that's amazing. I not gonna. I noticed that, and I was like, whoa. But I find like okay, so to a level, it working then. Yeah, but it's wild still. But I get it. 
It makes sense for me. It's like you basing connection off of the connection, the core of connection, which is the inside of a person. Yeah. So I do get it. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna come for <laughs> Americans again. No, no, because I was going to just say that, like, for some people, though, like a level of the connection is like. When I look I at you, I like, girl. If I if them doors open, I have to look down. Oh <laughs> fuck! I don't know what I went to, <laughs> but like, but I feel like they've had people like that, but they just didn't want to put on TV. Where they probably look at the person was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, fuck. like I can't do this because you have the couples that don't get. There's so many people, but you only get like what five? Yeah, four, five. And I guess based on what we watched so far, because we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. It's looking like four. And it, it was is. going to be five while a girl literally just... Walk out. But what are the fucking odds that you went into Love is Blind and you know the person that on the other side? But that whole situation was sus. That that Lydia? But Lydia is on She hinge. creeps me out. She's one of those girls that passport bros go and travel to find. Nah, like, she's that's scary. that's thirsty and hungry, as you say last episode, for a man. Nah, she's one of them girls who call your relationship cute and be fucking your man on the weekends. That is her. Yeah. And I, she just, we were talking about it on Twitter, that like, something is wrong with this woman. It is, especially when she was talking to Aliyah saying... We are the same. But I she, see me in uh, you. But she was literally, Aliyah was literally telling her, like, I don't want to know these things. And she just keeps. She kept going. But I was oh, like, why the fuck you didn't get up and walk away? I would have slap her. I wouldn't just slap her. Unless no the violence, producers but. make her sit down, like, you have to let this moment ride out. I think so because it's so weird. But even with the whole when they told each other, I think the producers, that was part of the plot. The producers didn't want them to say anything. I don't think mm. they was allowed to say. Because mm. Haiti. For one, me and you become close. The man I'm falling in love with, about to marry, you was dating him and y'all had him sex. three months ago. And you not telling me at least once and we, we here living together for whatever time this thing is. The producers had to have something to do with that because on top of that, the man... He had, she had tripped all when she said she cheated on in her last relationship. You really Let's didn't talk that. about that. You didn't realize that? that no, like, I did. And that was wild. And then for you to be holding out a secret that you had no Lydia? Nah, but on top of that, the man said, oh, I did it too, but I kissed. Sir, At if you sniff a pound of cocaine and a kilo of cocaine, you still sniffing cocaine. I didn't like the fact that he was like, oh, but I just kissed. And he was trying to add the fact, though, that it was like, 10 years ago where she just do that two years ago by the end of the day like you i feel like you can't go into relationships judging the person based on what they do in their last relationship but i feel it's like the way he judged her that it was, was weird up. to me i understand you have reservations about that i genuinely do understand that look you cheated oof that's information i got to digest let's talk about it but this man was he made her feel this big he, like, but it's the questioning that came oh, with it how he was grilling her and he was like and you didn't tell him like you so it was more about you so it was more oh, about you get like he walk was out. coming for her character as a person and i just I feel like walk out. and she had feel like shit and you mean that whole time but she was you had much. fuck lydia three months before my nigga like what yeah that's what that's what played in my mind because it's like you make her feel like shit and that's you had something you need to tell her yourself in this moment right here sorry i'm still like he was doing too much he was doing too much but you understand why she leave i would have left along why because that part i don't understand because i feel like at the same time like lydia is the problem and i feel like if you can't, if True. if you in this moment have Lydia in your space all the time and you can't see something wrong with this woman, why you still want to be friends with her so much? Because I think Lydia manipulated her to the point where she didn't realize the hold this woman was forming on her until it was too late. Because I genuinely feel Lydia was there every time she cried. That's trauma bonding. Mm. Like, that's a level of like, you are my shoulder to lean on. And she's never seen this man, but she's been around Lydia and Lydia kept giving her that sense of she loved her. I feel like Lydia wanted to be Uche. She wanted Aaliyah to love her and proposed. 
because it was just weird. And I genuinely feel like she got into her head too much. But then, then that's a Lydia problem. That's not the UJ problem. So then it's like, why not stick it up with UJ? And if it don't work, it don't work. You walk away at the altar, period. But and I feel like... I don't know. Aaliyah was pissing me off too. I'm sorry. Every two seconds, I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. Get it together. Like, I'm <laughs> sorry. And she was crying, but she wasn't even crying. She was sobbing. Mm. And I'm like, get it together. She was sobbing when she found out about Lydia and I didn't <laughs> understand. Like, even when he told her about Lydia, she was mostly crying that like, oh, fuck, like, it's Lydia. That's what she was crying about. Because she loved Lydia. She was probably more mad that he was with Lydia than the fact that Lydia was with him. Oh, my God. God, yeah. come on. But, okay, at the end of the day, though, is would love be blind to you? Like, would you be able to do it? No. <laughs> Guys, I'm being washed the connection? Or We can make a connection. I know I am Looking in each other's eyes. definitely brainwashed. <laughs> like, I have, and I was, tell, I was telling Jordi that, like, <laughs> recently, like, I really been questioning, like, my... I, it's not morals. It's not like I okay. Is it morals? But just like the standards of like beauty and attraction and like, I feel like a lot of it have to do with where you grew up in the world. Yeah, and I don't know. But I, it made me realize that like I wouldn't be able to do a show like this at no. all because you know why? It's also more than just how a person looks to me. It's also just how you move, how you talk. If you mm. have a charm to you, I like know. you know what. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, for real though. Like I could hear your voice, but if I'm not seeing how your face moving when your you mannerisms. sing your mannerisms. Exactly. To me, it's way more than just it's not that superficial that it just looks. To me, it's really just how you like move as well. Yeah. Plus I gonna be asking questions on the show, like, do you go to the gym? <laughs> Why? Because for me, it, it's not a shallow thing. But I've been busting my ass oh, yeah, yeah, in yeah, the yeah, gym. Yeah. Best believe you're going to bust your ass too. Mm-hmm. It may so I don't know, because if it was on the other foot, how would that sound? Like if a man was saying that about a girl? Okay, so recently, I was having a deep conversation with a friend. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I, Haiti, like five, six, seven years ago, would be like, you should, it shouldn't matter to you what a person doing in, on that when it comes to dying life. But I had a situation where like, uh, I think I had to tell you about it, but I don't know if I show you it. That, like, I really, like, the person was cool. But then when I see them, yes, I did tell you. I tell you in some Martin. When I see them and then yeah. their body was just giving couch potatoes. And I'm not coming to judge anybody. We don't body shame in 2023. <clears throat> no, I, but, oh, God. But, it's but that's what I do in... No. That's bad. No, if your body giving couch potato, it's just a comparison of what your body look like to... A valid yeah yeah image. you're probably just giving couch potato yeah but like and then i realized that like it was that was the turn off for me understandably then, yeah but then it's like i realized that like and that's the thing with this and like you're really gonna realize things about yourself that like i kind of walk around and expect and not expect it to return if you get what i mean that exactly. like some people really look at like certain body types and be like that's not for me but you know what it is for me it's not even like the body type is to say is the act of just working on yourself. Like because, no, because this person used to go to the gym. Oh, never mind. I think about <laughs> take it back. I because, think maybe now no, they know at better. The same time, no. So at the same time, like that I think is two things. It means like if you just actually do something about it and it goes back to something you said earlier, like the way you eat and yeah. like like, if you're active enough to, like, you know, just keep an active lifestyle. Yeah. But also that, like, sometimes some people just genetically going to have a certain body type. And that just might not be attractive to everybody. Exactly. And it's, like... I think that's So that's okay. what I mean. Like, I get why you would ask that question. That's what exactly. I'm trying to say. Whereas, like, if you had asked me five years ago, I would be like, that's not nice. <laughs> oh! <laughs> like, you get what I mean? Yeah. Because it's, like, I, I actually recently... Had us that, but it was like, oh, okay. So I also be judging. Yeah, but I genuinely think, like, for anybody who feels the type of way about it, I don't see. No, straight up, if you're not going to the gym, what are you doing? You literally could look better than ninety percent of the world if you just go to the gym. I guess the question is, what is looking better though? You know, what I just mean? looking fit. For me, the body type thing comes in when it's your preference. If your body type fit 
looks different to then my preference of body type fit, mm. cool. However, though, just for me, the mere fact that you are fit adds three bounty points. On but top fit of it. in the sense of like you, um, you don't have to be buff. You don't have to be Larry the Lobster. No, that you have. How are you supposed to put that? Like you, you have the, not condition because it can't, it's not even it's not even physique. But you mean fit in the sense of like you, your body works out. Yeah, <laughs> but like that could just look differently for different people. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah, for yeah. me, I would kind of fish on that whole love is blind, but not in a way that's deliberately trying to find out how you look. I'll be like, so you can reach the top of the cabinet. <laughs> I think you think they're allowed to ask questions no, like that. No, I genuinely don't. But, but I know, I think they do. The gym one, I know because a lot but of them. A lot of them would be like, do. "Yeah, I love working out and shit like that, or aerobics or whatever." Themselves. But like, I I think that would have to be a question I ask though with the height thing because I just not going to go on the five, six, six. I just not going on the six. Nah, sorry guys, and that's a for me that's a mess up thing, in a sense that my pool. Is a kitty pool. It's almost mm. a puddle. Mm. Like, in a sense of where I feel a bit disconnected and sometimes scared is just, I feel like what I'm asking for, as much as I will always, like, believe that that is, you're out there, I feel like it's just a stretch, in a sense. I mean, is it? <laughs> is it? <laughs> no, There's it's a not. a lot of time men out there. Is exact. I take it back. Plus, London, you be you be serving. Yo. But is that level of you be serving? But then they could be serving at five seven thirty. Yeah. We 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 always having this conversation, guys. But like, yeah. no. But I get what you mean. But okay, what you would say, and I know we talk about this a lot. But like, if you really have to deep it and not talking about things of like artificial, high, superficial, or, yeah, like how would you picture? What you think is needed, what feeling a person would give you, but you would be like, wow, like this is the one. Like, what, what, maybe what would they have to be doing? Or how you think your, your, your body would feel when you know? Okay. I would like, be weak. Um, let me think. Mm-hmm. Feeling is why, because I feel like I never really experienced no, the feeling. But. but also, no, maybe you never experienced it, but I feel like. And that's important to start thinking about for anybody that even if you never experienced it, if you experienced it before, mm-hmm. like to be aware of like what, what you're going to go on in your body, in your mind when you know, okay, well. I think what going on in my mind is I don't just know in that sense of like this guy is it. And I think one thing that a lot of things that would influence that for one is just that feeling of we both just unapologetically ourselves and mm-hmm. it meshes. Mm-hmm. And he's not afraid to be himself with me. Because I feel like, um, based on just a lot of insecurities that people could have and whatnot, I feel like a lot of people hold back in certain interactions, especially when they feel like, maybe she ain't gonna like me, for me. Mm-hmm. I hope and pray, and I can't wait until I meet the man who is just him, so that I could like him for him, yeah. and not any show that he's trying to put on, or any feeling that he's trying to make me feel that's just not, real mm-hmm. and a level of i want to be on like cruise control mm, like you just <laughs> like i'm just there duh. like i just want <laughs> to be there like i don't want Shit. to have to worry about specific stuff when i'm with him i want to feel and i it's straight up i do want to feel that i do want to feel a level of safe i do want to feel a level of he just takes the lead because mm-hmm. I feel like I do that so much in my personal life. It's mm-hmm. nice to take off the uniform. Mm-hmm. And to have a man allow me to do that and really allow me to just, oh, uh, chill Coach. is so freaking refreshing. And I, I, I genuinely can't wait for that. And one of the biggest thing is someone who continues to make me feel young with them. Mm-hmm. Like, I love games. I love stupidness. Mm-hmm. I want us to be stupid together. It prevents wrinkles. Like, straight up. And he need to dance. Not he need to dance. <laughs> we need to dance. Like, girl, I'm here building build a bear. I'm building a man right now. But just that level, I want... You feel like a dancing is a non-negotiable? <sighs> Bye. That's a level of intimacy that I hold at a high regard. 
mm. dancing for me with but at the same time I just want somebody who's able to be intimate with me on so many different levels. Yeah. Even levels that's not physical. Yeah. Hmm. And I have, the list goes on, but we we, we don't want to make this like a three hour episode. So what about you? No, I feel like I'll, you you hit the hit nail on head with a lot of points, right? Yeah. But I think like, ultimately what you said are like, I actually just feel like I could breed. Yeah. And because I feel like, especially if you're out here dating and you meet people and stuff, it's like you, like you really feel like you're out here holding your breath. Yeah. And it's like, you don't know. It's like... That you're on an edge. And you don't know yet when it's like, oh. Like, yeah. I can just be able to just breathe and be my complete self. Because you say you would hope he could be his complete self. Or just yeah. the person. But I just feel like I hope the person could just be their complete self. But then I could also just be my complete self around them. And yeah. that it ends up feeling that, like, this is where I... It feels like home. <laughs> that kind of, like feeling you know what i mean and I just really and not comfortability in the sense of like i'm not going anywhere but just comfortable in the sense of what you're talking about cruise control type of thing where it's like huh. yeah, yeah you're just chilling yeah but yeah we talk about so many things that like i just feel like it would have to have make me feel that way yeah but i just know in myself i'm going to just feel like but at the same like time you could like, take a deep breath yeah but at the same time, I know, like, they don't, not, not even, I do not just come to you that way. But I feel like say. sometimes, what? What you was going to say? Uh, what? Kyle was just about to say, bitch, it coming. What, the juice? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that, like, <laughs> not really is my train of thought. I was mm. going to say that, but at the same time, that, like, um, that's why it's important to know it. Because... It could be coming your way or it could be done. It's like if you're not sure what it's for you, yeah. you're going to be questioning a lot of shit. For the guys, though, like I'm also curious, like what y'all, what y'all look for? Like comment that shit because I really want to know. I'm very curious because nowadays, I don't know. It's just a level of there's so much look for us that I don't know what people really look for. But I don't know if men feel that way. Oh, really, man, they're going to say this themselves. But mm. I feel like they have the... I don't know if it's a disadvantage or an advantage to the sense of like, for a lot of men though, as long, they really feel like, as long as she like, look good. Does that, but just like peaceful and like, there's no issues. And that's why I say be what? specific with the boring thing. As yeah. long as she's peaceful and there's no issues. Like she don't, like, she don't bring me no issues or like, yeah. She takes care of things or like, like I good. And I yeah. think like, all will be listening. I feel like a lot of men don't look for that. It's not important. All those things is not important to them. Because I think on one hand, you have the, the, the conversation of like, men themselves feel like they have to be the ones to bring a lot of it to the table because they have to be the ones to lead and have all of this going on. So mm-hmm. it's like, she don't have much to worry about. So it's like, as long as she does this, like, I don't mind taking care of the rest. There's that level to it. I think there's also the level, the level we talk about a lot of the times of like, like, I go as long as she's doing this. And I, I, don't, I just really wonder if like a lot of men happy when they go through life with that mindset. But I know there's a lot of men that think how we think and they just want to be able to feel like she's home and like she's their best friend. And Yeah, because I was just going to ask you like, what would you want to be for a man? Because we talk about like, want, what we would want yeah. a man to be for us. but I want to be your best friend. And I want to be the person you run to and talk to. But everything that happening in your day. And then you feel like Haiti is the first person that comes to your mind when it happens. Cause then like, I yo, know, babe, this just happened. Yeah. Da, 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 da. yeah. And like, I don't know. I really connect with music. Like a new song come on and you think like, oh, she going to like this. And you send that to me. Because you just. love language. Music is a love language to me. Heavy. Oh, and then it's like. I don't know that like I, and maybe it's a little egotistical, but I like at every moment in your life, certain things remind you of me, and that yeah. like that sparks something in you to, for you to feel comfortable and Facts. feel like this I am your person. Facts or you yeah. know that you I, do want to break the barriers and not be the forty percent. Facts. Facts. <laughs> Like, Honestly, and though. we hit forever. You know what I mean. Shit. And if you don't feel that way about me, then bye, bye. Yeah, for me it's the same. I would also 
yeah, like you said already, I just want to be a guy's safe space too, mm-hmm. where it's like, it's hard out here for us and it's hard out there for them. We're not comparing who struggles harder. For me, I just want to show up and be that level of like, yo, you taking a big weight off my shoulder because I'm able to be vulnerable with you. I'm mm-hmm. able to talk to you about stuff and you're not going to judge me. Yeah. We can literally just talk about it and grow from it mm-hmm. rather than it becoming a thing of like, I can hold it against you or some yeah. shit like that. And yeah, just that level of, yeah, home, mm-hmm. being home for a person for me is just really important. And I don't know. For me, I feel like also on the guy's side, I didn't mention this, but being able to like teach each other stuff oh, yes. in every way. I feel like that's... If you can feel dumb around you, that's Woo! different. Because we all know I'm not. Yo, and it's not <laughs> that you got to be like nerdy smart, no. But if you know about something, you know how attractive that is? Like, Bruh, if, if you Googling, know... Oh, if you tell me some wild fact that I be checking, like, how the hell you know this? Let me pull up my phone and Google this. Yo, I love that. We're a passion. It shows that you're curious. And we like a man who's curious. Yeah. But two seconds. I was going to say something. You're going to bring it back because, guys, my phone. Today we have two cuts. That's wild. We always have one. We never had more than one. But my phone is about to die. And we don't need that. that. No, I remember. Uh, <laughs> we I, back. Yes, I remember what I was going to say. I was going to say. So a lot of times, I feel like we just keep it PG thirteen on this channel, right? And it's bite the bullet. And it's bite the bullet. But I'm gonna be very honest as to like what I want and what I would want them to feel for me. But I just really feel like that sexual tension, like sometimes when we just look at each other. Or just having to just be sitting on, on the couch. Or just even when you go through your day and it's just like, I can't get wait to like Yo. go home and like. But even at event and all you just catch. Oh. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Insert <laughs> devil emoji here. <laughs> nah. Like I want to just feel like I want to rip off the clothes and you want to rip off mine. Like, yeah, straight up. Because that is just important mm-hmm. to me. Big facts, big facts. But yeah. <gasps> wow <laughs> yeah is is yeah it's that time girl this was wow i know right i think we no no we take i don't take in in this moment yeah i hope my future man sees this <laughs> <laughs> uh, baby i'm waiting no not only nah. that i mean i take it in the moment on the couch I can't know with the phone and the lights. Yeah. But it's yeah, true. man. You remember what was twenty um, I mean sixteen in Portuguese? Joyce Joyce. Joyce is Joyce. It was Jody. Joyce Joyce. I saw the teacher to be asking these questions at the end of each episode. Joyce Joyce. Did you remember what you learned? Jesus says. I was close. Jesus says. Oh, Jesus says. No, Jesus. Jesus says. Jesus says. Like Jesus says. Jesus says. But oh, I was gonna ask you though, because like we was being negative. Sorry, not to end it yet. But like I feel like this still some couples. That was negative though. That was positive. Yeah, the, no. The, the ending. We ain't done. They still have some. Do you feel like they have couples in your life that make me feel make you feel like it's possible? Because I think personally, your parents. Yeah, that's the first people that popped. Yeah, in. they've been together forever. Mm-hmm. I don't know how they do it, but. <laughs> but they do it yeah those are the first people that pop in my head yeah like i do i even my grandparents like oh. yeah because my grandfather passed away mm-hmm. but they was together until the end mm-hmm. and they was together for 50 something yeah mm. that, that was her first love my grandmother's first love yeah first they got only- married young young mm-hmm. and <laughs> oh my she's not talking about you don't worry <laughs> She ain't gonna watch this. <laughs> but, no, oh no, I don't know. <laughs> um, nah, definitely my parents, because I feel like daddy, I love you, but sometimes you was difficult. Mm. And I feel that level of being able to talk to each other and the growth I've seen definitely like in my father mm-hmm. and the patience I've seen with my mother is something that is very admirable because a lot of people would leave or mm-hmm. maybe you know feel like okay nah mm-hmm. i ain't doing this 
So that's really the only example for me that is valid. I don't look at social media anymore mm-hmm. as Mm-mm. because <laughs> it's a lie. Like people could be out here posting the happiest pictures, happiest videos. I don't and take them seriously. Sorry. Yeah, they could be beating each other in the back door. So Mm-mm. yeah, I don't I don't follow couples on social media, but I've met some nice couples who I really feel are like just genuine and just beautiful Mm -hmm. and you feel that energy of love you feel like you could see the guy is just so in love with a girl and I think those moments really girl they made me want to tear up Mm -hmm. like hands down it's just so beautiful to see that I'm still alive Mm -hmm. and I even had a a friend who told me because they was like they into somebody and whatnot Mm -hmm. and they was like now I understand what they say about if he wanted to, he would because I want to and I will. <laughs> yeah, I get that. And it just made me so happy because it's like this shit is real. Mm-hmm. It's not it's not something that is too hard to ask for. You're just asking the wrong people. And for me, I genuinely feel like my person is just probably home right now no, or in I the gym. So. Yeah. so yeah, definitely my parents. Shout out to y'all. But what uh, about you? Blah, blah, blah. Um, no, cause remember last, I don't remember what episode it was when I was like, when I was like, a lot, I don't have much friends around me that have relationships that I'm like, ah, uh. yeah. And then I just think on like, in my surroundings, even on the island, there's none. Oof. But like, oh no. Okay. One of my uncles and my aunts, like they, I end up chilling with them all day and for some of trying to release like get an episode uploaded with Samata Internet. Gee. And it's like they're really like best friends. They're gonna be so sick of each other, but it is it is it is be funny. Cause like some of me and my aunt just team about my uncle. Yeah. And we just love teaming up on him. But mm-hmm. like I just find it so cute how like all of they accomplish together and like my uncle, they both retired now. It's the one that was the governor. Yeah. And he just like chilling, like getting up doing what he wants to do. And so is she. And it's like to just see that they like, I don't know, like enjoying each other's time in that way, just traveling and stuff like that. I find it the cutest. I love that. The cutest thing. But before, like other than them, I have these godparents in, and I haven't seen or spoken to them since I was in Miami living with them for three months. Mm. But that's the thing. Like I, I had no of them my whole life and he was my godfather. But because they was like my father friends from Belize, I didn't grow up with them. So then I went Miami to live in my in 2017 for my study yeah. for three months and I ended up staying with them. And I have a video even on my Snapchat to this day, like because they both were teachers in a school and that's how I get to do the internship there mm-hmm. by the same school. And like sometimes at the end of the day, like they would literally be like students like chasing each other to the car. And, like, she would be laughing, like, running away, like, leave yeah. me alone, leave me alone. And he would just keep chasing after her. And then, like, just how they would be with each other and snuggling. Like, it's like they it's like they just fall in love with each other every day, over and over and over again. And that was so beautiful for me to see at that time. Like, it that is. that is possible. Yeah. And it was just beautiful. And I think on a very personal level right now, like, my brother and his girlfriend. Because, like... I was telling him a time, like, it just makes me, like, I know, I don't mm. think people, I don't, if you don't have a sibling, I don't think people understand, like, the love you have for a sibling. Yeah. And, like, just knowing that, like, he that, like, happy and that his girlfriend is somebody that, like, I love and respect and that, like, that's the person that choosing to love my brother. Like, I just feel like I could. Yeah. And if I have, and I tell him that at the time, I was like, if I have to be single for the rest of my life, I'll be fine because you're good. And he was like, but I'm not going to be good because you're not good. Fine. And I was just <laughs> like, like, what are you talking about? The logic is not <laughs> no, making sense. But I mean, like, to the, but I really mean that to the sense of like, one of my happinesses in life is knowing that my family good. Fine. And so it's like, to know that he have that kind of love in his life yeah. makes me feel like, okay, like. I think a big thing that goes back to that with the whole kids. Not kids, but being able to tap into your inner child. Mm. Like with a man especially, I find a lot of them feel like they need to be serious. Mm. I think for me, what's big is if you don't take yourself too serious. Yeah. Because I feel like life is it's too short to be taking yourself too serious. In a sense of like, like how you say, being able to run after each other. Oh, and that just, was so cute. I'm going to look for it and show it to you after that. Yeah, <laughs> but that's the moments I find I cherish the most, especially with friends. The stupid mm-hmm. shit that we do. 
So to be able to do that with somebody for the rest of your life, to be honest, is an endless opportunity of what you could do with them. Exactly. But yeah. <sighs> but I just wanted to end it off on like uh you know, there is stories in our lives and there around are. us. That's not even on social media. That just have me like, you know, I know like it's out there and it's beautiful and it's inspiring and it gives me hope yeah. at the end of the day. So And it's in all of us too, as yeah. wild as that may sound. Like I do genuinely feel like it's in all of us. It's just a level of disconnect, but also a level of trauma, a level of experience, mm. a level of perspectives that's formed based on experiences that is really kind of getting in the way of us just receiving our blessings. And it's mm. unfortunate, but honestly, as the sooner we start dealing with it, I think the better we will be in terms of just everybody. I'm not saying everybody come in a circle saying Kumbaya and heal, but just be mm. open to the fact that we all have ways and certain perspectives or certain ways of thinking that needs to be unlearned. We do mention this a lot, but I feel like in this topic is really important because now it's becoming a thing of we in the process of unlearning stuff, mm-hmm. but we get so much information that you don't even know you what know you're what learning anymore taking. either. Yeah. So I think my like last note is just to be really mindful, be really open and be really graceful because yeah, at the end of the day, what you know, some people may not know. So rather than judge and educate and I'm running for president guys. Don't forget to vote. <laughs> I hit the but, like, comment, share. Uh, that's <laughs> it. Like, yeah. Oh, uh, episode about love. It's all about love. I got to get our book still because Dan was like, we got to oh, get yeah. our book. Yeah. It's in my card. We're going to get it. We got y'all. We're going to have like a book club. Yes. Watch nothing. But the, the BTB mm-hmm. book club. BTBB. BTBB. Oh. BTBBC. Mm. That sound mm, wrong. Yeah. That sound like a that category sounds like plagiarism, on like but, you know. X. Oh, <laughs> um, but oh, I was talking about BBC, but okay. Yeah, I was talking about BTBB. Oh, you were talking about the PGBBC. But what was the? Because my students did a lot of data. We had this. We have this man that just come and do my homeroom classes to activities with them, and he was like, "Yeah, they was telling him to say BBC, BBC," and he was like, "Oh yeah, BBC," and all the boys start laughing, and I was like, "Was not was the rated R version?" BBC Big Black Cock. Oh, Wait, what? I didn't watch a porn like that, guys. So don't, no, don't even tell head, me that. Like, what they know about her? Because they all Turkish. Bitch, they know more than. Oh, that's what I mean. Nah, girl. Well, no one of them was bad, but it wasn't the black. It was the Turkish boy that was saying it. So that's why I was like, that's to show you how exposed these children is. But whatever. How old is though? Because I, I feel 12. like we were, but I was a bit exposed at that, at B- that age. BC, Turkish in Holland, Den Haag. What you know about that? But that's, mm, that's what I, I mean to she, like, yeah, in St. Martin in the Caribbean, that's in the common because you're surrounded by a bunch of, but I don't know. Surrounded I don't by know. BBCs. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, anyways. Um, yeah. Anyway, that was it for this episode, <laughs> guys. Thank y'all for tuning in. Uh, if you made it this far, you're a real one. We appreciate you. Yeah. And yeah, like exciting things are coming. So be on the lookout. I know we keep saying it, but the build up is building up. So <laughs> yeah. just take it. Today's the cliffhanger, though. Yeah. This. Yeah. Yeah. Just be ready. Just be ready. But um, uh, yes, guys, I hope everybody has like a phenomenal week. Mm-hmm. Um, I hope we've added some sort of value to your day, whether you were listening or watching. And don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Yes, and thank you for listening. So much, guys. We will catch you episode. bi-weekly on Tuesdays. Do it. Bye. Bye.